Charlie Sensei is president of the Minnesota Kudo Renme. Many of you know her already quite well. Carly, let me turn this over to you. Great. Thank you. Um, I have never done a live demo like this before, so I'm a little bit nervous about how this is going to go, but that's okay. We're going to just make it work. I want to uh, give a shout out to Mark Tutsui, who I can see on my screen. Hi, Mark. I miss you. <laughs> Mark started with us up here in Minnesota. Um, today I'm going to talk about, um, okay, so you need you need to let me share my screen here, yeah, Tim. Well, I'm just uh, trying <laughs> to figure out which one of you I need. To I think you, uh, so the, the, um, if you can allow both of my accounts to be hosted, yeah. um, then I can share my screen because I have slides. Okay. I shall make you host. Do I want to change host? No. It, it bumped from Carly because it was shifting. Let me try again. Um, make host. Co host. Make host. Co host, yeah. That'd be great. Well, I've made you host. Yeah. You can do anything. Full control. Great. I'm so glad you trust me. Trust All you. right. And are we recording this? Uh, we don't normally it? because of we haven't, the AKR doesn't have a hosting source for hosting hours of video. So if you would like, I can record. I have the, I have it set up on my, I'm on my work computer. So I can do that if you would like, but if we don't, then I won't. It's really up to each speaker. I'm happy to have it recorded. I think the more people know how to take care of their equipment, the better. Cool. Well, appreciate your offer, Michael. We'll take you up on it. I'll be happy to. Off you go. Okay. Great. Um, forgive the very negative T-shirt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty great, though, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> My brother-in-law gave it to me, so. All right. So I have a couple of slides to just sort of walk through. Um, what I what I know and where I learned it and the basic steps. We're talking about replacing the rattan just above the nigiri kawa on your yumi. So that rattan at the top is called the yasuri do. David, how often do you want me to pause for you? Oh, just uh, I have a, bad, a very bad connection. I don't think mm. I can be like. Okay. Well, since we're recording this, then why don't we add um, Spanish subtitles later? Yeah, don't worry. I, you can, re if you record it if, and if you allowed me, I can then translate it on top of it. Perfect. And Perfect. then share it with you so you can share it with the, anyone. I wouldn't, wouldn't give it to no one until you see it. Uh, that would. Yeah, I, I, it's fine. It's fine. Let's, let's do that that way then. Yeah. Um, because then you, we don't have to rush. Through yeah, go ahead and, and sorry about that, but I, I will do it. Count on it. I, I do. I will okay. count on you. <laughs> Thanks, God. All right. So we we're talking about replacing the Yasuri Do, the rattan on your Yumi. Let me get my mouse over here. Um, there's a number of different types of rattan that you can buy from Kudo um, vendors. Um, the top three are the ones that you see most often sold. You will not often see the last one, but occasionally you'll find it on a, a Japanese site. And I'm going to go through describing what each one of these looks like. So you can, and I will also share these slides, by the way. So um, you can feel free to enjoy the presentation without having to screen capture anything. Um, so the first type is an ichimonji. This is a type of rattan where the width of the rattan is the same throughout the whole length. It's often um, used on sort of lower quality bows. Sometimes it'll be included on uh, some of the fiberglass bows that you might buy. And it's perfectly functional. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, it's just a different style. Um, one that many of us might be familiar with is called the sugunari, suginari, excuse me, and that is tapered. So it starts really wide at the bottom. I don't know if I have a little, oh, 
Oh yes. Laser pointer for the win. Um, it starts wide at the bottom and then it slowly tapers up to something very, very narrow at the top. So this is something you'll see pretty regularly. And then finally, you have something called mentori, which is used for the decorative wraps, both at the top and the bottom and just above the yasuri dough that you'll see. Um, like I said, the last one is the, um, is the kirizume. And it's, it's quite narrow and it's only used for the very top and the very bottom of the decorative parts of the bow. So the mentori can be used here just above the yasurido, but it's, um, it, it can fill the gap if you can't get your hands on the kiritsume. I think there's just a slight difference in the width of those pieces of rattan, and that's it. So what you need to do is you need to, um, once you obtain rattan, and you'll get it from a kudo shop with, in rounds like this, it's not terribly expensive. Um, I would venture to say we could probably get something very similar here uh, in North America, but I haven't gone looking yet. Um, but you need to soak it in water for about 30 minutes. Some people will even soak it overnight so that the rattan becomes more supple. And once you're done with that, you would wipe it off with a towel um, and, and begin sort of working it. And I'm gonna actually, show, I'm gonna actually re do this after I'm done with my slides here and we'll see if I actually succeed. Um, the end, the first tip that you start with is, uh, doesn't, can be started on the inside of the bow, but the um, final end should always end on the outside of the bow, the todake of the bow. So that's something you want to make sure. Um, you want to have a, a good sharp knife at hand because you are going to need to shave down the ends of the rattan as you're wrapping it. Um, you want to use just, you know, good old bundo, right? Uh, or standard wood glue. Uh, to affix it to the bow, just, just like with your nakajikake. If you use anything stronger, it will make it harder to replace again later. So just stick with that. When you start wrapping, you start from closer to the nigiri, and then you wrap up the bow. Um, depending on the kind of rattan that you are using, um, the ichimonji, the, the single width type of rattan is wrapped for about 68, six to eight meters in from the nigiri up the bow. And um, usually the suginari is a little bit longer. It's about nine centimeters up to the bow. And you'll use your knife again after you're done wrapping to shave off the, the end so that you can tuck it in and secure it. Um, for the tucking, I usually use um, this tool that um, came as part of my Kudo toolkit. It's it's uh, somewhat blunted and and a little bit bent um, blade that helps you with tucking in the ends of the rattan and also the nigiri kawa when you're replacing that and stuff like that. It's pretty handy. I like it. Okay, so today's subject is this bow. It's our um, Tachibana 10 kilo, one of our original dojo bows. It has been through so much. And uh, it's a fiberglass bow. And this is already a rattan that I have replaced at least twice. Um, but it's already getting another hole in the rattan. And um, that just is, is no good. When I started to have this problem when I was still practicing in Japan, my sensei actually put epoxy on the outside um, just so that it, because he thought at the time that it was gonna be too difficult to teach me how to do this. And perhaps at the time that was maybe true. Um, but in the meantime, I've figured out how to do it. So there's that. Um, when you remove the existing rattan, you can literally just peel it off. And this is what it looks like. It just comes right off. You just gotta find the end and then you, take it off and then you know, throw it away. Um, the 
bare bow will sometimes have some little bits of uh, glue or things like that on it, that's fine. You can try to wipe those off. I took a um, Clorox wipe to it because it's just a fiberglass bow um, just to clean up some of the leftover glue, but some of it is there. And I didn't feel the need to work too hard to try to get it all off before doing that. So there's that. Any questions before I switch cameras? and go to the live demo. There's something in the chat. I think there was a question in the chat, Connie. Um, yeah, from, from what I've, uh, Steve Scott Sensei asks if the temperature of the water matters. From what I've read, it doesn't. Um, nobody has ever mentioned the temperature of the water. They just said soak it in water. Any other questions? Okay, Jeremy Jeremy um, adds that he finds the wood glue to be very strong and he likes the white Elmer's better. I think that's fine. Um, we tend to like the Bondo just because the Japanese wood glue has a lower water content and so it's less drippy and it dries a little faster. But Elmer's is also fine. Um, also, just for uh, reference, a lot of the information I, I got this got from this uh, Kudo Equipment book. Um, one of the authors is um, Matsuo Makinori, along with a selection of other awful, uh, authors. It's Japanese, but it's got a lot of really good pictures. So if you can get your hands on this, there's a ton of information in here about how to maintain your equipment, how to fix arrows, all sorts of stuff in here. I also found another website called yumidiy.com. This guy is a kudoka and a maker. And he has detailed videos and pictures and descriptions, mostly in Japanese, but of how to do all kinds of things, how to wrap the nakajikake, how to, um, he even made his own hard case for his takeyumi. Like it, he's wow. kind of my favorite individual at this particular moment. So don't tell my kids. Okay. <laughs> so Are what I'm gonna do- that matter? What's that? Or your husband, my, that matter? Well, I think he's on the call, so he probably heard it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my phone over to my desk here really quickly and turn on the video. If you want to spotlight my other account, Tim, you can certainly do that. All right. Uh, uh. I can't do anything, Carly. You're the host. Oh, that's right, because I'm in charge now. I forgot. Okay. Oh. I will. I will absolutely do that. Let me find my other into my other being here in this giant list. 55 people on this call today. That's outstanding. Plus a few more. We've got four in our room. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. I am going to add Spotlight to that account. Okay, so now you see my red bowl with the plates in it, yep. hopefully. Um, the reason why I have a plate <laughs> is to help push down the rattan so that it stays completely soaked for the time that I was soaking in water. So I just have a big bowl and the plate was the idea that I came up with to uh, keep it totally submerged. I tried a couple other things and they just it just didn't work. but. This is good. I'm going to wipe this off so that I don't get water all over my desk. And, and then I am just going to pull this out and wipe it down just a little bit so that it's not drippy. Okay. Uh, you might need, have you spotlighted your other camera? I, we see everybody. We, I, I, I don't I, see it. Um, I should see like a. If you uh, if you change your view to the speaker, it will show both her uh, both of her streams side by side. 
And so that's how I'm recording that. Up under the Sweet. top right hand part of the screen, there's the view button. And then there, if you click on speaker, it should show both of her streams. Yeah, I'm not seeing both. Let me see if I can force that view for everybody. Uh, I don't know if I can. Hmm. Because I have a lot of people are chiming in that they can see it's just the two. So yeah, that's fine. Ignore okay. me. <laughs> if you go full screen, and then I think it gives you that option to click on speaker, and those are the steps that I've taken. Yeah. How are we doing? Are we going to get through it? Yeah, go, go ahead. <laughs> okay. So I have, I have my, this is a, a Suginati rattan, piece of rattan. It's quite long. Um, the, the top part or the part I'm going to start with is very wide and this part is very narrow. So you can see how it changes width throughout the very first end, the wide end, I'm going to shave down. I'm going to actually put on my makeshift thumb protector thingy here. Um, because I want it to be flat enough to, um, lay smoothly underneath the first layer. So if you watch a Yumishi do this or a Kudo, um, Kyuguya san do this, they can just do it really super quickly and accurately. I have not done it enough to be able to do that. Um, I'm shaving down kind of all sides, tapering it as much as I can so that um, it can lay kind of flat underneath. Jeremy, how long is that bit that you're thinning down? Um, really only just a half a wrap around the bow. It doesn't need to be very long. Um, I do see that on some of the other demonstration videos, like Ikai Kyugu posts a lot of uh, demonstration videos, and um, he he seems to to sort of do a much longer piece than what I'm doing here, but I'm not sure what the reason is for that. So you can see it's kind of jagged. If I take a time here, that's because I'm not that good at this yet. Um, you definitely do want to have something on your thumb to protect your hand from, so you don't have any, can't get blood on the, yes, you do. All right, there we go. So I have this. Kind of flat, not terribly straight, but that's why I have the cutting board here so I can kind of do things like that. Okay. So once you've gotten that, you can take your, your bondo and put that on, where's my bow, there it is. Uh, asked if sandpaper or emery board would also work to thin it down. Mm, I think it would take a lot longer. I mean, you're you could certainly try, um, but it's still even though it's got um, you know it's kind of um, softened from being soaked in water. I think that it would be a little bit difficult to do that. So I'm going to try to position this so you can see. So the easiest way to do this, and this is in an office that is a little bit cramped, um, is to, to, this is the bottom part of the bow here. You wanna turn it upside down and wrap from the nigiri here up. Does that make sense? I think I'm gonna move my camera here. Hold on just a second, because this is not working for me. You get to see my sense of fashion on a Sunday too. All right. So you wrap from the bow grip up the up yeah. to the tip. Yep. To the tip. How are we doing? Is that better? Yep. All right. So I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on here. Why don't you explain about which direction you're wrapping? I will. 
So again, this is the nigiri kawa. The bottom part of the bow is, is this way. You can see that it has the bottom rattan here. We are replacing the yasuri do, which is this way. Okay. I'm gonna start a little bit above the nigiri because I can always push it down as I'm wrapping. So I'm gonna hold that tail, that flattened tail down and just try to cross over it. Try being the operative word here. Yeah. Again, not expert. Nobody's watching. <laughs> <laughs> You're hilarious. Okay. Um, there we go. I encourage you to try this early and often because it does take practice. And once you can get that, that, that initial piece under so that it stays secured, then you can wrap from there. You don't want to wrap on top of the leather because you want to be able to replace the, the nigiri kawa before you're ready to replace the yasuri do, right? So if you have leather there, you want to just sit right on top of it. And what I'm doing is I'm really keeping a good tension on the rattan as I'm wrapping it and using my other hand to kind of keep, keep it all together like this so that it's as flat as possible along the the yumi okay and well this looks a little strange here but we'll clean it up um some uh, someone lost video feed of the second feed but it looks like most people still have it so there will be a recording yeah we'll have we'll have a recording that'll make this a whole lot easier um I didn't have a chance to pre-record anything, so I get to do this live. Uh, come on. So um, I'm just gonna continue to wrap it around as much as possible. Some people, it seems like we'll add a little bit of glue and some people won't. Um, I'm a fan of doing a little bit of glue, but you don't have to do that. If I don't knock something off my desk, it'll be a miracle. Okay. It's much easier once you get it going. Getting it started is kind of challenging, but. And you just kind of keep going, pushing down a little bit as you go to make sure that you get rid of all the gaps in, uh, there we go, get rid of all the gaps between each layer. And because it gets narrower, narrower as you wrap up, you end up having to do it quite a bit more at the top than at the bottom. Length. Got a few more centimeters to go. What's your target? About nine for this type of rattan. Yep. How long overall do you think it will be just Oh, what's the total length of the rattan piece that you're using? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, it usually says when you purchase it, it's almost always much longer than you need. Um, I can't, I, I'm not sure. I still have quite a bit left and I'm definitely not going to use it all. 
I'll see if I can find the information real quick. Thanks, John. All right. So we're about here. This is probably about right. It's close. Close enough. Um, so I'm going to wrap around to the back. So once you kind of get your length down, then you need to cut and shave off the end of this so you can kind of tuck it in at the end. So I'm going to get my knife. And you always want to tuck it in, tuck this top end in on the todake of the yumi. That is the outside face of the yumi, not the one that faces you when you're in Kai, but the other one that faces the target. That's where you want it to be. So I'm just going to cut this. I can't seem to keep this on camera for some reason. Sorry about that. Cut this kind of generously out here. Eh, and then if you let it go, this is what happens. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so keep your hands on it. <laughs> so we will just rewrap this little bit again. It's like a spring. Yeah, so it, just if you could use a clip. To Probably, or tape, you know. Dave says he uses a clothespin or a large paper clip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something like that would be fine. So. We're getting through it. Almost there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to shave this part down so that I can just tuck it in underneath this top layer. And I'm going to try to do that without losing the wrap here. And then I'm going to have to vacuum my office later. Um, again, what I'm going for is getting it kind of flat so it's easy to tuck. Do you hold the blade perpendicular to the rattan or sort of at an acute angle to the rattan? When you're I think, yeah, I think um, whatever is comfortable, whatever you have the most control for. And like I'm using this this sharp knife that came in my Kudo toolkit, but a lot of the uh, people on YouTube that I've seen do this use just like exacto knives. Um, Thanks. So in my case, I'm it's because it's an angled blade. It's hard to kind of keep totally vertical, but I guess it is mostly vertical. All right, so I have this. I want it to end up on this side of the bow, so I'm going to make it a little bit shorter. That might do it. I'm going to add some glue here. And I'm going to use my fancy little tucky knife. And I'm going to try to just kind of push it in underneath the top. And now all of these, like there's like, this bottom part looks a little weird because I didn't quite shave it enough, I think, but 
there's like little gaps here. You want to try to push all of those down before too much of this dries. Carly Keiko asked if we should do it while do the shaving while the rattan's being wrapped, or should you perhaps shave the ends, do a pre-wrap, shave the ends, and then do a final wrap? Would that be another? Way? Um, I don't. I so. I think that it's easier to do it as you're wrapping because I think um, you could certainly try it the other way and report back and see if that does work or if that is somehow easier. I think that it would be hard to replicate the same wrap a second time because it's, it's very much dependent on how much, um, how much pressure you have when you're wrapping it, how, how tight you can get it. And um, that is all done just by your hand, right? So I don't know, I mean, it'd be worth a try for sure. I've seen YouTube video of people doing both ways. So I think both yeah. ways. Yeah. As far as methodology goes, I think this is just, you know, how can you make it work? so that it um, so that it works pretty well. The other thing that uh, other recommendation I've seen on a couple of sites is to put just a little layer of this wood glue all across the top just to kind of keep it in place um, because it dries clear. So you just sort of spread it around like that. And when it dries, you'll be able to, you won't really notice it. And it'll help keep it, both keep the end in place here and also just generally keep the rattan from unwrapping. Um, I'm really unhappy with the way this end came out, but I'm not sure there's much I can do about it right now. See how it's kind of lumpy here? That is not something that you'll see when somebody who's very practiced at this is, is doing it. Um, in this case, this bow gets so much use that uh, I'm just gonna wait until the next time when I have to uh, replace it and then I'll try to do a better job. Andy, uh, Andy asked a question, how quickly does the rattan dry out? I think that depends on your climate. <laughs> um, it's pretty humid here in Minnesota right at the moment because we just had a bunch of storms roll in yesterday. Um, so I think it's going to, I think the, the rattan is going to really um, change its flexibility depending on where you are and how much moisture you have in the air. Um, you certainly have plenty of time to, to do this and make sure you know even if you struggle with it it'll it'll be fine and honestly if you if you find that it becomes harder to work with um and and you really haven't gotten very far yet take it all off and put it back in the water for a while you know the it's not gonna probably be a terrible thing so um one of the things that i've learned by looking at that kudo diy site is he shows in detail how to make these kinds of decorative wraps so I'm going to probably tonight experiment with how to do that because <laughs> he shows how it's all done. It's pretty great. So oh, that you know I mean? mm -hmm. about a supply. Did you mention a supplier site for the rattan? Um, I think you can get it at most Kudo shops. I'm going to mute this video again um, so you don't have to look at my lap. Actually, I'm just going to. I will just add that the on the keto shop front there that that is for some reason. Yesodido rattan varies dramatically in price from shop to shop, which is pretty much the only keto shop item I've seen that does that. So, um, I'm looking at two sites right now. One has the, uh, the Suginati Yesodido for 3,300 yen. One has it for 1,710. So. Yeah, and I, I wonder if that's a, a quality difference. I don't know. Yeah. Like it might be it might be that, you know, so if they think their rattan is better or their rattan is better. I don't I don't actually know. 
Um, as many of you have um, probably know, I used to work with Sambu, so we tend to buy most of our stuff from them still. And um, I don't think that we pay very much for it, but I'd have to look at the pricing again. So. All right, another question. Um, mm -hmm. Mary asked if there's anything to protect the rattan after preparing the Yasuri dope. She's seen some with it, with like hairline cracks along mm -hmm. the skin, not worn out, but overall thin marks. Perhaps it's gotten too dry. Um, I suppose that's possible. I don't, you know, there it's, it, the, the rattan is made from, is, is kind of made to, to sliver off like that, right? Because it's such a thin piece of, of bamboo. So um, hairline cracks and things like that, I think it's just a sign of wear and tear. And when you decide to replace it is kind of, um, I would replace it before like a hole like that gets to like where it, the one that I, that I did, like if we, well, Maybe I'll share my screen again. Um, hold on here. So this one, it it had a hole like right here, but it was still sort of connected a little bit. <sighs> And so um, I wanted to replace it before this part broke because then you have bits of um, rattan that are like literally peeling off as people are trying to shoot it. So I just try to, to replace it relatively early. I do generally wait until it's worn through so I can see the bow on the other side. <laughs> um, but it, that very much is dependence depending on your tolerance and which bow it is, right? This is one of our dojo bows. We've had it for 10 plus years. It's got, it's gone through a lot and, um, and doing this again and again for that equipment does take time and money. And so we kind of wait a little longer for where my bow, I probably wouldn't wait that long. Um, but everybody's got a different tolerance. I saw two more questions in the chat. One was about Besides that spot that you're showing that wears out, is there anywhere else on the rattan that tends to wear? I mean, in general, it just sort of... Any other damage we should be looking for? for yeah, I, I think in general, it, it depends on if um, how the bow is handled, right? Uh, it's entirely possible for the rattan to get damaged just by being mishandled, bumped up against other things. Um, you can get sometimes discoloration, like um, like Jade mentions in the chat, um, just because of being the climate you're in or things like that. There's a lot of variation. And um, one of the things that is kind of challenging, like you saw on the bow that I use, is like you can replace the, the Yasuri dough, but if you don't replace the decorative stuff, then you see a drastic difference in color of the two um two pieces of rattan and so that's just what happens i think yeah. which is one of the reasons why i think it's a good idea for everybody to learn how to do this and one question was asked in spanish from maria in mexico and it was mm -hmm. to remind everyone how long is the rattan soaked in water about 30 minutes Although some people will put it in water overnight, but I, I would say a minimum of 30 minutes. 30 minutes to overnight. Okay, and the other conversation is mostly just conversation and people asking each other's questions. Um, yeah. Yeah. I would, like I said, um, oh, you probably can't see this window because of the way I shared. Um, this, this guy is super cool. This Kudo DIY person. Um, he's a maker at heart. You can totally tell. And like I said, he's, he actually put a post in English, um, where he actually made his own hard case for his Yumi. Um, 
it's pretty cool. And he does step-by-step -step pictures as well as a YouTube video. So you can see how it all goes together. It's, it's pretty sweet. Um, yeah. And his case actually breaks down into three pieces for storage. So um, I don't know what he does for a living, but he clearly makes things. <laughs> <laughs> He's a maker. He's a maker. So one other question Mariella asked about, she saw you doing the rep and then afterward using your, your tool to tighten mm -hmm. it down. She asked, should you perhaps tighten it down using the rep? I mean, yeah, you can you can do it both ways. I was kind of pushing it down with my fingers as I was wrapping. Um, I think you'll still end up having to do a little bit once the wrap is complete. But um, that's also fine. Yeah. I guess the other suggestion is to improve your your um, mitte so that we don't cause this to happen in the first place. Yes. I mean, that is true. Your rattan is going to last a lot longer if you are shooting well. Yes. So <laughs> Any other questions from anybody? This has been excellent, Carly Sensei. This is Massimo from Virginia. Uh, mm -hmm. One quick thing. Um, I found uh, uh, some uh, uh, rattan and other, and other um, uh, supplies for uh, doing refletching uh, from a website that sell to uh, fly fishing uh, mm -hmm. uh, enthusiasts because they use rattan on the fly fishing rod and also uh, a silk wrapping that's identical to the silk wrapping that goes on the on the arrows. So um, um, I bought uh, some rattan that's thin and even in 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 thickness. Uh, from this guy on the internet. Cool. It would be great if you could share the link to that site so we can. Yeah, I'll try to dig it up and, and send yeah. it. Yeah, but I'm all the, for crowdsourcing. <laughs> the, the, uh, yeah. the silk or the synthetic um, 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 uh, thread to do the, mm. uh, the refletching. And mm. it also sells bar varnish, which is for finishing uh, once you wrap the, 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 the thing, uh, which looks much better than other, uh, than other method I've tried. I tried uh, clear nail polish and don't try mm. that. It doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, the spar varnish is better than anything else I tried. And you can oh. buy all from, the, from this guy online. Nice. Excellent. Thank you for sharing that. Great. Any other questions? Yeah, it's getting, it's starting to get, re I mean, Kudo is always ridiculously expensive, right? Um, but it's starting to get worse. And I'm starting to get more and more convinced that we need to try to source some of these materials more locally. And um and, and try to make it a little easier on ourselves that way. But, yeah. um, to be clear, Jeremy asks, no, no finished coat is normally put on the rattan? No, not, I've never seen that done. Just a little bit of glue to keep it all in place. Yeah. All right, well, let's, everybody is quite appreciative of your presentation today, Carly Sensei, that was most excellent and really good to see somebody doing it live. So we all can then try it if we have a source of rattan, either the Japan Kyuguten or perhaps the fly fishing sites mm -hmm. that were suggested. And um, yeah, thanks for that. I also wanted to announce about upcoming events. So we're still having these monthly events and next month will be May 22nd, Ed Sim Sensei. He'll be speaking about Kudo treasures. The month following will be June 26th, Jeanette Karan Sensei. She's going to speak about practicing Kudo when you're away from the dojo. For July, August, September, I'm in discussion with Tim McMillan, Maureen Reed, and Fumiko Takada. Hopefully we'll get the three of them lined up for those three months. 
And after that, we've gone through the AKR Wrenchy. I'd like to invite speakers from, who are Wrenchy level in either Canada or South America who would be willing to give a presentation. They're willing to, uh, they could present perhaps later this year. And then after we've exhausted all of the Wrenchy who are willing to speak, then I'd like to open it up to volunteers who are uh, below Rinchi, but who have something that they are passionate about that they would wish to share. It's got to be on a Kudo topic, something that you can share to help educate other Kudoka in the Americas. And you don't have to worry about speaking to the top level. You want to speak to your peers. So speak to the Godon, speak to the Shodon, speak to the Mudons. You know, any level of talk is fine because we've got a wide variety of Kudo experience and everyone, even if they have some basic Kudo knowledge, they, we can always learn something more. So we're gonna be opening this up and hopefully we'll have a long lineup of people interested to speak in the future. So with that, we will close today's video forum. Yeah, and I can't remember who said they were recording it, but if you wanna get the video to me, we actually do have uh, AKR video channel, YouTube channel, so we can put it up there. I'll uh, I'll drop box it to you. Awesome. Thank you. Michael Kennedy. Thanks, Michael. And then David, I'll be in contact about Spanish. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Scotty. Uh, Great. I, I will do discount on it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Great. Great to see everybody. <laughs> Likewise. Hey, Carly.